Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. Glad to have you back. Oh, well, thank you. I was on assignment yesterday. It was a very, very tough assignment. A tough assignment. And in case you missed it, uh, Lauren Kelly was filling in while Courtney was out hanging uh, with Sarah Jessica Parker herself. I know. She was here in Houston. Of course, this was the big sample shoe sale. She's brought in 5,000 pairs. That she donated, That right? she donated. She was actually there for several hours working the floor, talking to all the people. The that. whole reason why she was here, the shoes were donated. Look, that's me trying to be totally cool. Play it cool. She's standing right there. Watch this. Uh, watch this. Like, we're going to have a conversation here in just a second. No, Yeah, what? watch. Oh, yeah, hi. Where are you going? Oh, no, we'll be back. We're going to go get some lunch. That's what she said. She was, like, right behind you. Yeah. And, you did and oh. I, I freaked out. I totally tried to be cool. I was like, <laughs> ah. Uh, I'm just gonna be really cool here. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you. I mean, you two could be sisters, right? Not really. But thanks for saying that. But she was amazing. Yeah. She was amazing. And what's so great about this? Yes, it was a fun shoe sale and shopping event and all of that. Serious component here. She donated 5,000 pairs of shoes. Also, this collab right here. These are shoes that will go to Project Prom for MD Anderson for the yeah. kids who are going through treatment. Yeah. Can't attend their prom. You know this, Derek. Mm -hmm. They go to prom. MD Anderson has a prom for them. So those shoes were donated. And um, you know, this is just a, a really great event. By the way, y'all, more than three hundred thousand dollars was raised yesterday for, for MD, MD Anderson, Anderson right here in our backyard that is really from fantastic. that sale. And it's just so great that she donated these pairs of shoes. Yeah. And I mean, all those proceeds, that really is 100 percent of the proceeds went right back to MD Anderson. And um, I did bring in a few of my finds. Well, wait a minute. You got to tell us how many pairs you bought. I seriously, I have no idea. I hope my husband's not watching. Like five, six, seven, seven pairs, seven. Seven, okay. Seven. I did buy one pair for a friend who wanted a pair that they, so. So eight. <laughs> so eight. Um, so here's what's so cool. On the back of all of her shoes, you guys can see this ribbon here, and even on the pink, this one's a little less noticeable because it's basically the same color. It's like a gold ribbon, it's right. gold. Right, but every pair of shoes, she does this ribbon, and the, the story behind this is that her mom Sarah Jessica Parker's mom used to tie these um, ribbons in her hair as she was a child. And this is when she created her shoe line. She wanted to do a little something to show uh, respect and homage to her mother. And so every pair of shoes, and sometimes like they don't have the back, like they're a strappy, fun little shoe. Just this little tab could be found on the shoe. It could be in a different color like this, the pink and the tan. You know, it's a really cool, I, I just thought it was part of like her, her design. So when I found out that information, it was just pretty cool to yeah, learn that. So I sweet. have these on too. I'll show you these. to her mom. These are really fun. I'll oh, the Cinderella slippers you wore to the office today. Aren't these fun? Also with the ribbon on the back. Yeah, aren't Wait, those fun? So uh, do you have like a massive closet at home? How, how are these all gonna fit? Look at that. How do you, you're avoiding my question. <laughs> I mean, aren't those so cute? They're a box, a, like a box heel, so you can wear them. So where do you keep the shoes? Okay, so what else do we have going on? I'm serious. I would love, I would love to know. And and well, they're in my closet. Where? My Y'all know, like, we, we don't have a new home. We renovated, um, our home was built in 1971. So I'm going to tell you this right now, like, my closet is real small. So where are the shoes going to go? Uh, well, they're, and you know what I do too? I keep them all in boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney keeps all our shoes in boxes. I know this because this is like the first thing you told me the first day we met. Hi, I'm Courtney. I keep my shoes in boxes. They're I think not it's dusty an important, at all. I think it's an important detail. Not just in boxes, but boxes with pictures, printed like pictures that you so printed I know what out they are. and stuck on the box. Yeah. Doesn't that take a lot of work, though? It does. And now, like, sometimes instead of the pictures, like, if the box gets kind of yucky, you know, I get, like, the shoe boxes from the container store. The clear ones. And then I have, like, SJP. Like, it'll, like, I can see through them, but then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that shoe. Like, I, I know. I mean, that, that really is amazing. You know, the fun thing about uh, Brandon is that we both, we share clothes. So like we're the his pants are a little bit different because the, his waist size is smaller than mine. <gasps> Was I really stuck it in? <laughs> uh, but other than that, shoes, shirts, jackets, our wrists are the same size. Yeah. So it, our shoe section, you know, is is kind of streamlined because it's like doubling your wardrobe. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't have that. I don't have any girls either, so I don't have anybody coming into my closet wanting to wear my stuff. So 
I don't know. I don't know why I'm, I just said that. But, you know, I have all boys in my house. I don't have anybody to share my stuff with. I mean, people, bar my friends borrow things. I don't, I don't know. have girls coming in my closet and sharing my clothes. Girls, I mean. like daughters. No. That's what I meant. <laughs> okay. No? All right. Well, listen, I what think... What did I miss? I think um, it's really great that you got all these shoes. It's even better that the money goes to support MD Anderson. But I still want to see a photo of your shoe pile in the closet. No. And I want to see the look on Orlando's face when He's you... He's good. He's good. He does. It's it's fine. <laughs> He's good. He's good. He's like, <laughs> okay. He's okay. good. But more than three hundred thousand dollars was raised yesterday for MD Anderson Cancer Center to hashtag end cancer. It, it's got to happen in our lifetime, and this is one way that um, you know someone great like Sarah Jessica Parker using her celebrity. And by the way, she didn't really use her celebrity. She had no uh, media availability. Oh my word! I forgot about these ladies. How can I do that? These fantastic gals from MD Anderson. So all of the they're from the events um, department and development. Development, development department. I'm looking up because I put down all their names in my um, in my phone, so I wouldn't remember, I wouldn't forget. And here I am. Little group, and they've got so, their great little matching shirts. It's as well. Mary, Lene, and Rose Bella. They are so fantastic. They held onto my shoes. They they laughed all day long. Such a great, great group of people. But everybody from MD Anderson, all hands on deck yesterday. That's who was checking people out. This oh, yeah. wasn't like a retail shop, you know. Like they were all volunteers employees with MD Anderson. That family is so great. And the, the prom that you mentioned, the prom, Project Prom, Project Prom and uh, you know, all these young people going through cancer. We've, we've discussed this on the show before, but oftentimes when a young person is diagnosed with cancer, their world totally stops. They're not going to school, which includes right. they don't go to the football games. They don't go They're to prom. They're not seeing their friends on a regular basis. Right. They're not getting out of their hospital room. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why MD Anderson throws this annual prom. I think it's coming up April 27th. It's later this month. Right. I was there at the prom last year. Uh, Peli Peli local restaurant, they're one of the partners and there are a lot of local partners who really try to create this magical prom experience for a lot of young people who wouldn't otherwise be able to go to prom. And by the way, these aren't just locals. Because MD Anderson is such a world-class facility, you have people coming from all over the, the country, world. all over the world. And so they're not just missing out on, you know, prom in Bel Air. They're missing out on prom in Milwaukee. Wherever. Yeah, exactly. So it's really cool that the hospital gets together and they throw this special event. And even even better again that SJP was here to to highlight the great work that they do. Absolutely. It was such a fun fun day for sure. Also, yesterday I got a chance to meet someone, um, but we wanted to share this. Uh, this was a, a viewer shout out, I believe on Facebook. Um, Norma, this was a post that she said, and she uh, said, one of my favorite things about maternity leaves leave is that we get to watch Uncle Derek and Aunt Courtney on Houston Life every day. Oh, Look at how cute that is. That's goodness. baby Ella. And can you, her mom, Norma, I met them yesterday at the Sarah Jessica Parker collection shoe sale. You're kidding. Because no, Norma, she came up to me. Norma sent us this photo, I think, uh, last, last week. week. Yeah. She's like, I saw you. I saw this on Facebook. I saw you do a Facebook Live. I came out. I wanted you to meet your niece. And I was like, absolutely. Hi. You know, it was so cute. She was absolutely adorable. By the way, baby Ella needed a diaper change during, during her checkout. Yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker moved her stroller, got her up to the front of the line, and was like, this mama needs to tend to her baby. Let's check her out. Would you die? I would die. I thought you were going to say Sarah Jessica Parker changed, changed the her diaper. I mean, she probably would have, but she moved her right to the front of the line. It was so cool to meet her. But Norma, it was great to meet you and baby Ella. And I said I'd pass on meeting them to that you as well. That is very nice. Hi, Norma. Hi, baby Ella. I hope you're, you know, watching our show today. And uh, come visit us sometime. Next time, send us a picture of baby Ella's face. I, know, she's, I mean, the back of her head is very, very cute as well. Uh, adorable. Okay, guys, still to come on today's show, say big on spring cleaning by going DIY. Nora Capshi is here to help us do more with less. From a DIY magic eraser to a surprising way we can use Kool-Aid, hmm, Nora will show us how we can make household cleaners using things we probably already have in our homes. But first, we are halfway through the work week, so if you could use a little boost to get you to Friday, how does a cup of good Latin coffee sound? Oh, it sounds delicious. Is it here? I'll where is it? Please. Houston Life <laughs> correspondent Lauren Kelly is out at a pop up coffee shop in Montrose that is probably unlike any other coffee shop you've seen. Lauren, that's an old shipping container behind you, right? 
It sure is, and it flattens and it moves around from city to city, and it's only in Houston until May 25th. I've been up since three, so I'm going to take you guys inside to make some coffee. Coming up next, don't move anywhere. All right, you guys, I've been up since 3 a.m. and I needed a coffee boost. It is Lauren Kelly. I am here with Alfredo Medina of Cafe Bustello. This is a great pop-up shop here on Montrose. It's only going to be in town until May 25th. You guys are open daily. What are the hours? Well, bienvenidos. Welcome, first oh, of all. Bienvenidos. Uh, no, but I'm yes, sorry, uh, sorry. no, exactly. <laughs> 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day until May 25th. Okay, and you're Spanish based, like you just said. Tell us a little bit about where Cafe Bustelo originated. Like, where it, did it come from? Yes, originated in Spanish Hall in New York. Okay. And now here we have it here. And now, <laughs> nice here and we all are. over Houston. Here we are. And this is so great. Let's talk a little bit about this. It is a shipping container. It was converted into this beautiful, bright coffee shop. There's an upstairs area, there's a patio upstairs, there's a patio downstairs. Stairs. And on nice days, you guys have games out here for the kids and things. What a great way to just come and have a cup of coffee, make it through the day, and just hang out a little bit. Yes, exactly. And we have awesome selfie opportunities. Oh, yeah, a lot of cool uh, murals. Yeah, a lot of awesome murals by okay. local artists. And so, like I said, lots of opportunities. So we definitely want to invite everyone from Houston to come check it out, come hang out, come have a cafecito yeah. or something, cafecito. and just see, bring the whole family, and bring all your friends. And this beautiful mug. This is the sought-after coffee mug. Tell me about a couple of the hot items on the menu. Do you want to go inside? Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, okay, well, inside. I will tell you a little bit. Um, one of our big, uh, most popular drinks, it's actually small. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a cortadito. Cortadito. Yes, it's one of our signature drinks. Okay. So I'm going right. to show you that today. Yes. And would you this like to try small, it? small, but strong. So that's right up my alley. Awesome. Yes, let's do that. Okay, okay. great. Cortadito. All right. Okay. All right, here we have our Show wonderful barista, Arturo. Hi. And, um, so Hola. We're going <laughs> to... We're going to be uh, making your a cortadito okay. today. All right. So first of all, all of our um, all of our drinks are a sweet espresso. So that's okay. our base right espresso here. Espresso is good because yes. that's what keeps you awake. That's like so, right. lots of caffeine. Yes, right? okay. ma'am. Okay. So it gets you through the day, and okay. you'll have a good one too. Oh, good. All right. So what we do is we have a, an espresso shot right here, and we put a little bit of uh, some sugar in there. Okay. All right. Then we mix it up, <laughs> nice and, and mix up, break up that sugar. We want to put it in here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Oh, it is tiny. We take, it's like oh, a yeah. Like I said, it's small, but it packs a big punch. Don't okay. worry. You said you and like it strong, a, yeah, and that's and it's exactly foamy what milk we're going to have. Top. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that looks nice. And if you want to find out where Cafe Bustello is there going to collapse and move on, you can just follow them on social media at Cafe Bustello. May I try? Go, oh, my God. Oh, buen provecho. Oh, Enjoy. gracias, senor. Gracias, amigo. Amazing. Courtney and Derek, I'm going to be up, like, through the night. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1. <laughs> I know. You know, you're going to need it with those 3 a.m. wake-ups, Lauren. Oh, um, yeah, girl. Those are tough, oh, but God. so good. I cannot wait so to get good. there. I haven't been yes. there yet. I need to. And cool that it's inside a shipping container yes. as well. Can't miss it. Bright yellow. Absolutely. Have fun. Cheers. <laughs> All right, Lauren, thanks so much. After the break, from the history to the food, we're diving into Passover, the celebration of family and freedom when we come back. Welcome back. Food plays an important role during the eight-day festival of Passover, one of the best-known Jewish holidays. And here with the recipe, he says, is a kid favorite, co-director of Chabad of Houston, Rabbi Lazaroff. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me here today. It's Always a to great here. setup, and I love when you come in to really give us an insight into the tradition surrounding this time, Passover. Yes, Passover, we sit around the table together with family. We're celebrating the holiday of freedom, the Jewish people's redemption from Egypt, from slavery to freedom. And the key components of the Passover Seder is our beautiful sa silver Seder plate, which we make set up the Seder plate. We have three matzot, handmade shmura matzah is the best matzah to get. Mm. We drink four glasses of wine in a special cup, as we have four cups. And we have the Seder plate where you partake in the meal from various foods that's on the plate. And talk to us about how to, how to create a Seder plate at home. So you can make a Seder plate from anything, but this kind of gives you the symbols, and so it's nice to have a, a nice Seder plate. The first thing we have on a Seder plate is symbolizing the Pesach sacrifice, which we brought in the holy days of the temple. And that is, here I have, a roasted chicken neck as a replacement for that Seder Pesach sacrifice. Oh. On the opposite side, we put in an egg, which is to represent the holiday 
sacrifice that was brought on that day, and that goes there on this other side of the of the Seder plate. And then we place the mora, which is the bitter herbs. The bitter herbs is made up of romaine lettuce and some shredded or, or ground horseradish is in the oh. bitter herbs. Oh, wow. Make it like a little sandwich there. Okay. And then we have then on top, beneath that, the the um, the karpas, which is a vegetable, which we dip into salt water. Okay. And that, that's done during the seder in salt water, and that's going to go here. And beneath the the um, the the mower, we put in the, what's called the chazeret, which is used in a matzah sandwich, which we take the bitter herbs and put it between two matzo to make a sandwich. Uh huh. Perfect. We got one more left. And that is? Today's recipe, the charoset. Okay. The charoset. The charoset was, in, in, was to resemble the bricks that the Jewish people made in Egypt under slavery. And in Hebrew, the word is evan. Evan is spelled in Hebrew, aleph, vet, nun. And so we're going to have this kind of an acronym for the Yiddish words, epel, baden, nissen, which are apples, pears, and nuts. Ah, perfect. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is we got to peel our apples. Okay. So of course we always have to have great devices, and so we're going to stick it right over there and go ahead, Courtney, okay. turn it, it that way we and just peel our apple. Place. Yes, okay. there you go. And we, voila, we have our oh apple gosh, peeled. Rabbi, oh, this is, this is awesome. This is, they're the most amazing devices. And we take the apple. Okay. We're going to use a third apple to shred into our mixture of apple. We have a third of red apple I already have in here and a third of a pear, which we're going to shred in here. And you like to add the apple and the pear last after I shred up the nuts. Okay. Walnuts, almonds, and the fruit processor. We're going to mix it up afterwards into this bowl. Go ahead, put okay. it in. Okay, all of these? Yes, okay. that's almonds, walnuts, a, a half cup almonds, a half cup walnuts, and then we have our, all of our fruit. Okay. And that's going to go into the bowl together with it. And we want to put in some wine, of course, to partake Always. in the wine, of course, yes. to make it celebrate, celebratory. We stick it in and put it in some three, two tablespoons of wine okay. and mix it up. Mix and it. let's see if it ends up looking like brick mortar. And so on the holiday of Passover, every Jew is supposed to participate in the Passover. And if anybody Jewish out there doesn't have a Passover Seder to go to, Chabad of Houston hosts 11 Seders throughout the city of Houston, at which you can find information on our website at ChabadHouston.com. And there we have our brick mortar. Look at it. You're doing a fantastic job. It, yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad. And, there we go. and we got to put it here on the charoset, which is the final step to make our Seder plate. Now, while we have our Seder plate, and we're ready to go. I, oh, that is fantastic. I love Beautiful. it. Beautiful. And it's critical, you said, to have equal parts of both types of apple and the pear as well. You want to have the red apple because it's sweet, the green apple because it's sour. That's my personal preference. And we want to have nuts. You can have various nuts. People use walnuts, almonds. Some people use coconut if they're allergic to nuts okay. as a replacement of it. And you mix it together. And it, the key is this to look like the real thing. The real yeah. thing. Yeah, like the absolutely. mortar bricks that the Jewish people built in Egypt. I love it. And a reminder, by the way, so Passover starts to tomorrow night and goes through April 27th, is that right? Passover actually starts on Friday night. On Friday night. The first Seder is on Friday night, the second Seder is on Saturday night, and then it goes through the following Saturday. Okay. And by the way, Rabbi, I love your apron. Why, thank you. It's, it, is that what it's supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like the matzah. And it does. And it's not it edible. Does. No. I okay. apologize. Okay. But it makes for a great place to keep yourself clean. It does. Don't Fantastic. eat the apron, Courtney. <laughs> Rabbi, it is great to see you. And if you all would like to find this recipe on our website, just click on the food section of HoustonLife.tv. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Thank you ha so much. Happy and culture. And when we come back, we're helping you stay big with tips on how to make your own cleaning products using stuff you already have lying around the house. We're going to tackle this job when we come back. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. We want to help you save big this spring. And as you're starting your purge and cleaning projects, forget the pricey cleaning supplies. It adds up, it doesn't does. it, Courtney? Our next guest says we can use some basic household items to do the trick. Coupon contestant Nora Capshi, welcome back to the show. Thank you. And it is something that spans the generations. I mean, everyone wants to clean their homes faster, more effectively. That's true. And there, you already have things in your house to do this, and they're very inexpensive. So we're going to start off with some really great stain removers. Perfect. Okay. Um, baking soda, peroxide, and water. Mix it together, and it is a wonderful stain remover. Very simple. Don't save it, so you're going to have to do it every time. Okay. This works great with those bloody knees and, you know. Baseball pants? All those, yes. Just saying. Yes, all okay. of that. This works perfect Do you make a that. paste and put it on before yes. washing and let yes. it sit there for a minute? Yes, you just let it sit, rub it in, and then rinse it out. 
Throw it in the wash. So what? What is it? Equal parts, or what are we yes. doing here? Yes, equal parts. Okay. Um, uh, you can add a little bit more water if you do, if you want, um, but very simple and inexpensive. Safe on colors, or only for whites? I would say only use it on a thing that you test. Uh, so ah, just okay. make sure. Um, I've used it on colors as well, but. Just Test make it. sure you don't want it to. Another great stain remover is those old little bits of soap. Okay. Okay. Just go ahead and save them. Put them in a mason jar. When it's when it's kind of full, you can go ahead and add some boiling water to it. Okay. I brought mine from home. It turns into like a gel. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. And you can save it forever. I've had this same one for about a year. So it's just a little bits of soap yes. and boiling water. Exactly. That's it. Shake it up. And it'll become like a gel. And maybe put a label on that so no one thinks it's marshmallow cream. <laughs> yeah, I put, it, I put it in my in my laundry cabinet. So yeah. you say that's something to do on socks or whites Any, or anything. Anything. Because it's soap. It's soap. You know what yes. I love about these yes. ideas too? You know exactly what these ingredients are. Oh, and it's right? perfect. Carpet. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If something yes. is going to, you okay. know what you're using. This is a great trick. This is okay. going to save you a lot of money. A dishwasher cleaner. Okay, you can buy those at the cleaner. store. Wait, Kool-Aid? Yes. Okay, it has the exact same first ingredient as Kool-Aid does. Oh, I'm kind of disturbed citric by that. Citric uh... acid. No, it's citric acid. Okay. okay. That is the first thing. Now, you don't want to use grape or strawberry. You have right. to use the lemon, okay? Because, um, you know, you don't want to turn your dishwasher a different color. But how so do you this is it? to cleaning. This yes. is to clean your dishwasher. It goes basically. into the, the little compartment. This is to clean your dishwasher. This is not to clean a full load of dishes. Right. This is just to, to like you would for your... The line build up and the, you know, But you put it in where you would put in the dishwasher Correct. soap. And you run it as an empty cycle. Lemon yes. Kool-Aid, folks. Yes. You Lemon. Heard it here okay. First. Oh. okay. This is awesome. This will save you, oh my goodness, so much. Okay. Magic erasers. Uh -huh. This they work is how very you well. make your own. Okay. Okay. Borax and that's baking this? soda. Are we yes. going to make it? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You, so you have to have a sponge. Okay. Borax, baking soda, and a little bit of water. Okay. So it's all equal parts. And pour all this in. You don't have to pour all of it in, but yeah, that's good. Okay. And then you can just mix it up. Mix it up with a spoon. Yep. Yep. Oh wow. So a little bit more because it's going to be a little bit thinner than a paste. A little bit more water. Yes, water. a little bit more water. Uh-huh. And then you're going to take your sponge mm -hmm. and use it. You can grab that sock over there and use it on whatever you need to. Oh. This is great for tubs or any kind of thing that you actually need Any kind need of like to... hard water, yes. right? Mm -hmm. What about the even shower? on walls? I mean, because that magic oh, yes. eraser that will take of like scuff, a scuff off. Mark. Yes, yeah. it will. It'll work. Oh my word! Very simple, okay. and you already have these in your house. On the you borax, this—I yes. mean, I actually don't have that in my house, but you oh, okay. get that from like a drugstore or something. You can get it anywhere, the grocery store. Oh. It's going to be on the laundry and if you, detergent aisle, yes, right? Yes, and if you don't want borax in your house, use some like a baby OxyClean, and you can substitute this for that. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 And then also for like scrubbing powder, like the Ajax mm -hmm. type cleaner for the shower or the toilets, it is just soap, baking soda, and borax all mixed together. Together, and you'll just put it in a container and use it exactly as the same as the Ajax type Okay, cleaner. so oh, you said kidding. soap. So the borax soap again, yes, right? The borax, the salt, okay, and the baking, and the baking soda. soda. And you're and not adding has... anything to that. Sorry, Derek. You're no, not fine. adding anything to no. it. You're just using this. That's a powder. And what's great, the, so the texture then, it has that scrubbing action, but you also have the components of like the baking soda, which will help strip out the stains. Yes. Does that even work on soap scum though? And like nasty Yes, it does, because issues? the salt is like an abrasive. And then the baking soda as well. Not only, I know your that. mind's blown, it right? Is. Not only the coupon Contessa, what's your nickname for this? The cleaning Contessa. <laughs> the cleaning Contessa. There you go. I love it. Trademark that. Okay. Trademark that. Nora, we always love your ideas. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I knew a couple of them, but I learned something new. So thanks so much. Great to Great. see you. And if you all would like to find more of Nora's creative ideas where you can save and clean your home more effectively, just visit the Scene on Houston Life section on our website. And after the break, we're recognizing another teacher for their excellence in STEM education. We're sharing her story right after the break. 
Welcome back. Alliant Group and the Houston Independent School District have announced six finalists for the 2018 Elementary Science Teacher Award. Alliant Group created the program to reward local teachers who help increase student engagement through innovative lesson plans that emphasize the importance of intrigue of science. Yes, and today we are meeting our second finalist, Ms. Denise Conway. She's a fifth grade science and ESL science teacher at Helms Elementary. But science is everywhere. We live in a world of science and there's so many STEM careers out there. And so if, if we can capture them in the early grades to where science is fun and important, then it could change their lives forever. Okay, passing it back over to the sun. <laughs> My name is Denise Conway, fifth grade science and ESL science teacher, as well as lead science teacher for Helms Elementary. So C star, does it take or give? This is my 15th year teaching in, in total. My mom was a first grade teacher for 35 years. And so growing up a teacher's kid, um, it, I became well-rounded to begin with. My favorite part of it, the best thing about it, is the aha moment. When the kids grasp the concept and you know it's finally theirs, then their life's been changed forever. It gives energy to. I am extremely hands-on. Probably 90% of what I do involves a hands-on experience. Is this just one food chain or is it multiple? Multiple. It is multiple. When they get to do it, it becomes theirs. Even with a little guidance and a lot of student talking, they get it so much faster than just reading about it and then writing a summary over a passage. Hey. It is such an honor to know that my peers view me as this incredibly awesome science teacher. So find what you love to do and do it at the very best that you can do it. Bring integrity to it and give it your all. Make sure your heart's in it. A great teacher mm. can make all the difference. And all this week, we will be featuring the finalists for the Elementary Science Teacher Award and we'll announce the winner live on our show next week. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about Alliant Group, you can visit AlliantGroupNews.com. Such a fun segment that we're mm -hmm. doing. Okay, next on Houston Life, do you know what makes a mattress? We're going to dive right into the different layers to find the perfect mattress for you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Your mattress is more than what meets the eye. Learning more about what's inside might help you get the best sleep you've ever had. Here to help us pull back the bedding, Yuval Meichler, owner of Texas Mattress Makers. We like to call him the Mattress Doctor. And I see you brought some visual aids today, Yuval. Great to see you. It's, it's, a, it's always nice to see you. I love being with you. You're all so peppy and energetic. You make me feel good. <laughs> Listen, I love coming out to Texas Mattress Makers. Uh, people, viewers of the show know, you guys know all my mattresses are from you. But I love looking at the factory because we really get an inside look at what goes into a mattress. Talk to us about the two main components. The two main components, the first is your support system. Whether it's made out of a spring, whether it's made out of foam, it doesn't really matter but you need to have the proper support okay and that's underneath that's underneath so okay. as you can see they're showing you pocketed coils okay the second can the second components are your comfort layer so imagine as i'm speaking there's nothing straight about you right absolutely nothing straight your what are you back trying is, to say i'm trying to say that i love you <laughs> okay pay attention i'm speaking I, okay you. i'm I following you. along love you. okay there's nothing straight about anyone's body so the component of your comfort layer has to accommodate the curvature that you have in your body, has to accommodate the weight displacement that you have when you're laying down, okay? Basically sinkage. Yeah. And again, it depends on how you sleep. So I brought one example here today. This is a specialized coil. Most coils are made like um, a cylinder. If you put enough pressure on them, you're going to hit steel on steel and it's going to stop and create a pressure point. Okay. This is made like a barrel. So when you lay on it, it collapses. Okay. But the beauty part about this, it's very supportive. It's very supple and it's very airy. So it allows air to flow through it. So folks that are sleeping hot, right. this is a very good choice if it fits 
your body and comfort because as you and I have spoken a million times, you have to buy a bed that fits your body and your comfort level. And comfort level is so personal that you can't even describe it. You have to feel it. Exactly. Right? And no one can feel it for you. I mean, you have to experience it yourself. Hey, can we, for like just a brief time, talk about what you just mentioned, people who sleep hot? Mm -hmm. Because here in Houston, I feel like, especially this time of year, as the temperatures start getting warmer, a lot of people sleep hot. And, and summertime is when they sleep the worst, right? Right. This whole mattress in a box movement where you click on Instagram and you buy a mattress in a box and it comes home to your house and it unfolds, if you're a hot sleeper, that's the worst thing you can do. Correct. Why is that? The product that it's, the product that's in usually in those beds is called viscoelastic. Just a big block of foam. Correct. But it's a big block of foam with something on top of it that allows you the cushiness, that softness, all right? That is an excellent product, by the way, but it is so dense that it retains, retains your heat. Within three hours, a quarter of an inch of that product already has your body temperature in it, about 80 degrees. So there's a lot of things people need to understand that when you buy a mattress in a box, right, there's a few things you shouldn't do. One, buy a mattress that you don't know how it feels. Never buy a mattress if you don't know how it I, feels. I just don't understand that. Yeah, why you would know? someone buy some, I mean, you wouldn't, anyway, you, you've heard me talk about this, but you wouldn't buy a one size fits all shoe because that doesn't fit everybody. Exactly, it's convenience. So we at Texas Mattress Makers, right, will offer and we do offer you to buy things online. But what we're doing and we've taken a lot of time and effort is to try to have people understand each product and what it's for and what it's made. If you wanted to buy a bed that you wanted to put in your spare bedroom, okay, it's not something that you, it's not the same thing that if you told me, you've all I need a bed every night. Sleep on every night, yeah. Right, for a child, so on and so forth. So we try to be very particular about what the products are in the bed and ask you questions. Do you sleep warm? then you shouldn't buy this, you should buy this. And you can only get that experience when you go into the showroom, even though, again, I know it, if you go to your website, texasmattressmakers.com, people can buy online. Let's quickly talk uh, about where your components are sourced from. They come from local sources, right? Most of the components come from Texas, but it's all made in the USA, correct? Everything, best of the best. That's correct. Everything that I do is made in the United States. Everything that I can buy in Texas, I will buy in Texas. Everything that we don't use, we recycle. Lumber, steel, plastic, cardboard. The only thing I put in the garbage is dust, sincerely. That is awesome. Okay? I'm very conscious of the green, but not just talking about it, doing it. And everything we do is American. And the factory is right there. guys. Seriously, go in because it's an experiment experience. Yuval or his staff members will size you up. They'll have you get on a bunch of different beds. They'll, if you're a back sleeper, a stomach sleeper, a side sleeper, it doesn't matter. You will find something that works for you. And look at his face. Did you see how excited he was when he said that? He felt like a little boy. He came to the factory. He jumped on mattresses. <laughs> he just had a wonderful time. And we will, truthfully, correct? Okay, you are going to have a good time. Yeah. We're going to treat you with respect. We're not going to sell you. We're going to educate you and we're going to make you feel comfortable and we're going to make you understand the things that you actually do at home in your bed and what is the cause root of your discomfort. Listen, you guys are the master and it's easy for me to talk about you because I am such a huge fan. Thank you so much for making time to stop by. And next time we got to talk about all your great work in the community because you do a ton of that as well. And if you would all like more information on Yuval, the mattress doctor here at Texas Mattress Makers, you can call 713-341-6252 or visit them online at texasmattressmakers.com. Yuval, thanks again. Great to see you. My pleasure. Still ahead on Houston Life, the hottest celebrity hairstyles and how you can use them as inspiration for your own looks. Don't go away. Oh, I love this next segment. The spring season is perfect time to revamp 
your hairstyle. Joining us today with some of the latest celeb trends, Rachel Gower and Cecilia Kerr with the Upper Hand Salon. Welcome Thank back to the you. show, ladies. Thanks. Thanks My glam us. squad, in other words, you know, they make magic happen. It's smoke and mirrors <laughs> up here. I this is this is a natural story because everybody mm -hmm. wants to look at the celebrities and be like, I want their hair or yeah. I want their makeup, right? Yeah. yeah. This is kind of like adult dress up. Yeah. It yeah. really, really yeah. is. And so what we did, this was so much fun, wasn't so it? Fun. So we sort of found some really hot celebrity inspiration photos, found some beautiful models, and we just kind of transformed them into the celebrities. Oh, we didn't take regular people? No. no. Oh, well, no they, actually, kidding. they are. I know. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But they they're, are you beautiful. know, they're moms, and they do stuff every day. So these great, these models are great. Okay. Yes. All right. Our first celebrity inspo is okay. Isla Isla Fisher. Isla Fisher. Yeah. Yep. So she's or Isla, gorgeous. Sorry. She usually does this sort of side part. And okay, now here's Paige. All right. Mm -hmm. So Paige already had red hair, but you don't have to have Gorge. red hair to do this. Okay. Yeah. So tell us what you did. Oh my gosh, Paige and these red extensions. Anytime that you want to amp up your look, always add, just, you know, go out and get some non-invasive like clip-ins or a halo or something okay. because you're going to use it, you know, at some point. So in this case, we just curled her hair like you normally would. And my secret weapon when it comes to blending your extensions, because you can see I wanted to show kind of these little pieces down here. Those are definitely the ends of the extension hair. But when you take a brush like this that's part boar bristle and natural, you can blend them really well. This is my favorite. This is the Varus. Okay. And I like to go into the curl right here and brush it up with that brush. Right That's there. a oh. great technique. Yeah. It really makes it hold too. Yeah. So bottom line here is that if you want these va va voom waves and you look like Paige in the before picture, just add some clip in hair. Uh, we can help you with that. Right. And that's how you can get that volume. Isn't so good. Paige, you look amazing. I know, she looks better than Isla Fisher. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Okay, thank you so much. You look great. Okay, our next celeb inspo. Oh, we love her. Gabrielle, oh, Gabrielle Union. Union. Yeah. Hot from so, top to bottom. Yeah. You know, she's one of those that looks different in every single picture. So our beautiful Check model, Vanessa, with her long hair. Mm -hmm. She still has long hair. Guess what? We did not cut this hair. What? This, here's, here she is. Now, this is really super special because Vanessa is actually the owner of the company. It's, uh, so the, the website that people want to go to is tcchair.net. What she does, she sits with the client, and a lot of these clients are people who've lost their hair because of chemo, yeah. okay. okay? And she creates a look with them, whatever they want. So it might be celebrity inspired. Okay. It might be what they had before, who knows? Mm -hmm. But she sits with them and creates an actual hair system for them, and it's custom to them completely. Yeah. So is this extensions, or this no. is, a, this is an hair system? system? The hair system. What does that mean? <laughs> it means it's... It's a wig. It's a wig. It's a wig. Okay. <laughs> Look at the before and after. I have to tell you, I'm Isn't asking because I can't yeah. tell that yeah. it's a wig. I know. It's fabulous. She does such a nice job. She I matches love. skin tone and everything, so you cannot tell. Yeah. It's oh, gorgeous. Vanessa. And I love collaborating I mean, with Vanessa just because her clients, for the most part, just want to feel like themselves again. Yeah, they Maybe they lost have, their hair yeah. for whatever reason, but... Such Getting, a good resource. Yes. It's yeah. A, it's it really, fantastic. really is. Absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> so she can do, you know, she changes her look all the time. Right. All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Vanessa, thanks so much. You look great. Thanks okay, our Gabrielle. next. Um, I know, Gabrielle. This one's awesome. Catherine too. Heigl. Okay. okay. She always looks great, kind of has that glam yeah. Hollywood look. Yeah. She yeah. does. And she also usually <gasps> keeps her hair in that kind of bob. Okay, okay. so, this so is right here, we've got Andrea. So she's got a lot of hair. Let's look at her after. Look at her now. Oh, I'm wow. So you went through a full cut. Uh, well, see, you would think so, right? No <laughs> and cutting. And it's, it's not a hair system. There was no cutting. Yeah. Look at this beautiful bob. What is happening this here? This is a faux bob. Yeah. This is the coolest thing, especially if you want to try out what a bob would look like. Isn't it so cute? Oh, this you so tucked it under. under. Yeah. 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 So basically, you can um, use whatever kind of anchor technique you want. What I mean by that is something to pin everything to. You can do little French twists underneath. Right. I did a braid. Down here, you can barely see it, but that's where all that is underneath. And she just pins into that. And then I just pin it. You curl, curl diffuses any kind of harsh line or anything like that. So you want to curl the hair and then pin it. Okay, obviously, seek the experts you. for that. You did. <laughs> but I will tell you, if you're thinking about cutting your hair, go for a full a faux bob. Look, yeah. at the, look at that. Right. Yeah. So incredible. You can have the hair you want, She's going to trick oh. her husband later. You can have She's the hair you want immediately. That's right. Nice. Ladies, thank you so much. Get Thanks some for great us. celebrity inspo for sure. To learn more about the Upper Hand Salon, just visit upperhand.com. Looking great, ladies. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. the glam squad. <laughs> All right, when we come back, foods that feed your brain, what to add to your diet to help lower inflammation. It's coming up next.
When it comes to your brain health, there are foods you can incorporate into your diet to help repair cells and reduce inflammation. Certified nutritionist Crystal Hammett is here to help us think more clearly and avoid diseases like Alzheimer's. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. This this is always, I think, now becoming a bigger topic about mm. inflammation. Yes. How do we know if we're inflamed inside? What are some of the symptoms? Science shows what foods cause inflammation. So Alzheimer's and dementia, science again proves it's a brain inflammation problem. So inflammation through the brain. So anything you're eating systematically can go through the whole body and cause wreck havoc on the whole body. So. I mean, the statistics are horrible. 5.8 million Americans are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. That number is on the rise. And so we've really got to do something about it. Every 65 seconds, someone's being diagnosed. So that tells us, what are we doing different these days? It's our diet. It's the refined sugars. The processed the foods. The processed foods. So eating an anti-inflammatory diet is really protective for prevention and just for overall health. So some foods I want to touch on and avoiding. Okay. Your partially hydrogenated oils. So we're looking at your soybean oil, the canola oil, the corn oils. Yes, you want to pull those out. Um, it's really hard when you're going out to eat. So sometimes eating more of a salad or a raw meal is a better option. You want to always cut out your refined sugars, processed foods, really gluten. And a lot of people will say, well, I'm not gluten intolerant. I don't have celiac. That doesn't mean that gluten is not in inflammatory. It's a very inflammatory food. So that's one reason to pull it out. And then just go easy on your dairy. Some hard cheeses from time to time, a little yogurt here and there. Just don't go crazy because it is inflammatory. Well, I mean, this is big news for, I think, for a lot of people mm -hmm. because, again, like the canola oil, mm -hmm. the corn oil, the soybean oil, these are staples for a lot of people, yeah. but you're saying they could be leading to long-term problems. Absolutely, and it's a huge cause of a lot of long-term problems. So the good news is here, though, we can lower inflammation. Yes. We can repair brain cells. Absolutely. How do we do that? So there's three big food groups, and they all have either MCT or omega-3s. So omega-3s contain DHA and EPA. The EPA and DHA are both really good for your brain. Cold water fish sources are the best. You always want wild caught, no farm raised. So you're looking at salmon, whether you're getting it in a can or whether you're getting a nice salmon filet. This is mackerel. And mackerel is something, as a nutritionist, I always hear about mackerel is really great for you. And I had literally never tried it until I opened up one of these cans and I did eat one of those. A little hesitant. Mackerel in a can, how was it? It was really good. Like it's yeah. better than tuna in my opinion. How do you, do you just eat it by itself yeah. on a plate or do you stick it in a salad? I would put it on a salad. I would do something with maybe even smash it up and make like a tuna salad with okay. it. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And it's catch, okay to do the cans. Yes. Safe catch tuna is one that you really want to look for a low mercury tuna. Mm -hmm. Wild salmon. It is fine in the cans. And then anchovies if you dare. That's not my cup of tea, but it's very healthy for you. Yeah. I do love a good anchovy. I'm a Caesar. <laughs> So the omega-3s, that will help us lower the inflammation. It will, absolutely. Next food group is coconut. Like, who doesn't love coconut? And you can coconut. substitute coconut anything these days. So, yes, help yourself. So coconut flakes, mm -hmm. coconut yogurt. This is my love new it. favorite, Kalina. Okay. If y'all want to try that, it's thick and creamy and so delicious. Where do you get this? This one's from Central Market. You can find it at Snap Kitchen. Okay. Um, Anytime you're doing a oh, recipe, wow. that's good, good, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you're doing a recipe that calls for half and half or that calls for dairy milk, substitute it with coconut cream or coconut milk. Use that in your coffee as well and cook mm -hmm. with coconut oil. These are awesome, the These packets. These are awesome little, I call them little brain power packs. If you have a midday slump and your brain power is just slipping, you take it just down this package and oh my gosh, you'll wake up, your brain wakes up. It's really awesome. Really? Okay. I always have these in my purse. Very quickly, we got to cruise through the cheese. Yes, chia seeds. All seeds are really good for you, but these are the ones that are just like fish are high on omega-3s. So grab one of these, okay. grab a spoon, try the chia Thank seed you. pudding. If you haven't already had it, it's amazing. If you want to top it with some coconut flakes or some blueberries, mm. go for it. But chia is high on omega-3s and so delicious and it's just coconut milk, some natural sweetener, like I like monk fruit, mm -hmm. and your chia seeds, and there's breakfast. Oh, so good. That, that is good, right? so good. Delicious. I Crystal, love it. Always great information. To connect with Crystal or for more information, visit HoustonLife.tv. My mouth is full, too. We'll be I right know. back. <laughs> Delicious. Eat up. Where do you buy this? She made it. You made you this? 
Today's amazing animal tale is brought to you by our friends from the Houston SPCA. When animals come to the Houston SPCA with injuries, the vet team carefully weighs every treatment option, and they have to be willing to make adjustments as their patients heal. Well, when Chili came to the Houston SPCA on the 24-hour rescue ambulance, she arrived with an injured hip, and veterinarians had to decide to, uh, what kind of surgery would be best for her. And initially, they hoped to keep the injured leg, but the break was so bad they opted to amputate. Fortunately, pets were respond amazingly well to life with only three legs and Chili began healing nicely in a loving foster home. It was during that time when her foster family quickly fell in love with Chili and decided the sweet pup, not the pepper, had already was home before officially adopting her. And if you'd like to learn more about how you can help support the Houston SPCA, visit their website at HoustonSPCA.com. Dot org. And a reminder, it is time to vote in our very first Cool Schools contest. We've teamed up with Go Public Gulf Coast to highlight some of the amazing things happening in Houston's public schools. From the students and teachers to faculty and programs, there are so many opportunities and special people in our city's educational system. Let's take a look at the contest now on GoPublicGulfCoast.com. There are 12 districts to vote for, grouped according to size into five polls. You can head there now to vote and see the results in real time. We're gonna announce the winners on Tuesday, April 30th. Good luck to all the districts involved. Thanks for joining us today. We had such a fun show and we're debuting. Tech's got a perfect blow dry, a trim, <laughs> spring cut. He got a little haircut. He did. And he is more cuddly mm. than ever. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram. Super easy. Just search KPRC2TEX. Thanks for joining us today. We'll Tech see you says bye-bye. Bye-bye. Talk to you.